Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial. Today I will show you how to make a simulation using Moldflow Advisor. Now first let's start a new project by clicking here and click new. Then give your new project a name. I will call this one tutorial. And choose where you want to create your folder with all your files. Click OK. Now next you have to import your model, so click on import and browse to your part. I have this Parasol file that I will use for this simulation and I recommend using Parasol files as Autodesk Moldflow uses the Parasol kernel. Choose open and choose next. So now you see it will process the model. Now the import wizard asks you uh, whether you would like millimeters, centimeters, meters or inches. And for this simulation I will use millimeters, so choose the one you like and click next. Now let it do uh, an automatic cleanup and a suitability check, so make sure you have those ticked and click next. So now we'll fix some model errors and so on. Now for the meshing part you can choose either a standard dual domain mesh or an advanced true 3D mesh. I will choose a advanced 3D mesh for this part as it's, as it's quite bulky. So click OK. Now we have our part. Then first we will choose what type of material we will use for our simulation. Right click out here and choose select material. Just choose next here. Oh sorry, we have to set our injection location first. So right click set injection location and choose set injection locations. Now click near where you want your injection gate to be and right click out here and choose finish set injection locations. Now we have this little cone. Click on the cone to tweak the placement of the gate a little. For the X I will choose 0 and for my Y I will choose minus 17. You'll see it returns 17.147 which is because of the, the mesh that we actually cannot see but an injection cone always sits in an intersection in the mesh so this is the closest thing in our mesh that we will get to 17 and our C depth that will be 6 This and click apply and we can close this one now let's go back to tasks and we can now choose our material so right click here and choose select material now as I'm not quite sure what type of material I will use other than I will like a polyoxymethylene for this part in manufacturer I then will choose a generic shrinkage characterized material and then I will choose a generic polyoxymethylene right here click finish now we have to specify that for this um, this simulation I will only have one cavity so in our mold type uh, choose single cavity this will give us a little bounding box. Now next let's set our parting plane. We do that by clicking geometry and then choose set parting plane. I know I will have my C depth of my parting plane to be in C0 so click 
click zero here and click apply. We can close this one. Now we see we have this other portion in our fixed side or in our A plate and this lower portion in our moving side or in our B plate. And we will like to change that. So we have this big portion in our moving part of the mold. So let's rotate our part. We're doing that by choosing rotate. We would like to rotate this part 180 degrees around our Y. So click on the part here and click two times here. So this looks good. We have this lower portion in our A plate and the big portion of our, in our moving B plate. So we can click apply and click OK. Now let's adjust the mold size. Do that by clicking on mold size here. You can choose whether to specify the mold dimensions here or you can simply drag these red dots. So this looks fairly good to me. And close this one. Now we have to attach our gate. So in our feed system, choose gate. And in selection here, make sure you have injection location one chosen and in type. Let's click out here. But for this simulation, we will like a cold gate, which has to be circular tapered. And we will like a start diameter of three millimeters and an end diameter of one. So when you have specified your gate size, you can close this one. We get back to here and click apply. And close this one. Now this doesn't look correct as you see. So we will adjust the, the start diameter or the start place of this gate manual. We do that by first going to view. And under object visibility, make sure you have ticked run intersections. So double click on your run intersection here. This gives you the possibility to specify the starting point. And I want my to be, um, want it to be minus 17 here. No, I want it to be, I want my Y location to be 23. So click 23 and this doesn't look correct. We need a minus like this. It looks a little better. So when you're happy with your gate, you close this one. Now we will make our, um, make our runner. So go to geometry once more and choose the runner. In type, choose if you will like a hot runner or a cold runner. For this simulation, we will use a cold runner. And we will like it to be circular. And we will like the diameter to be five. So let's close this one. Now, as you see, I have a pretty fine mesh for making my runner. We can adjust that by clicking defaults in grid settings here. And under style, choose a grid size of, for example, one millimeter. Now snap to this run intersection here and drag something out here like this. Close this one. Now double click on this one. And I would like my Y coordinate to be exactly minus 40. So I type that and click OK. Now we need to place our sprue. So click on sprue. 
and in sprue properties under type, let's initiate that. We will like a cold sprue and we want it to be circular tapered. We would like the start diameter to be three millimeters and I like my end diameter to be four. So I close this one. And then in my drop point coordinates, I choose zero for X and minus 40 in Y and I click apply. Close this one. Now I want my runner to be four millimeters instead of five. So I simply double click this runner. And this gives me the possibility to change the diameter of the runner to four. So I do that and I apply it and close this one. Now we have set our gate and our runner and our sprue. So we are finishing geometry now. So click finish geometry. Now let's make a pre-analysis check to, to see if everything is good. It shows me that my model is ready for analysis. So I click OK here. That brings us to the analysis wizard. So initiate that. And by default, it chooses the the fill analysis, I will like some more. So I take this one away and I scroll down and I choose my warp. And this also chooses the fill and packing. Then choose next. And we have selected our, our polyoxymethylene for, for this analysis. So let's choose next. Now we can specify our mold temperature here and our melt temperature of, of the material we are using. We can also specify what the maximum machine injection pressure is. Um, by default, it's 180 megapascals, which equals 1,800 bars. But um, for, yeah, that, that's good for this one. We can also, uh, manual specify our velocity and pressure switchover, which I recommend to do. Um, but for this analysis, we will just choose the automatic. And for the injection time, we will also choose automatic injection time. So leave them ticked and choose next. Here we see our packing profile and we want the cooling time to be calculated automatic. For uh, our 3D warpage analysis, we will not disable aggregation uh, as we will like it to be as precise as possible. So we choose next here. Now in our analysis model processing, we choose high anal analysis resolution. And we have already specified our, our size of our gate, so leave this one out and choose Analyze. Now it starts solving, as we can see down here. So I will pause this video and get back when it's done. Now it shows us that the analysis is uh, complete. So click OK here. And um, let's close this one. And let's have a look at the results. It shows the warpage indications by default first, but let's look at the fill time. So right click here and choose show. We can detect this summary to remove this one. Hide this one here. So this is how our filling of the mold looks. You can see it. the blue here is our feeding system, which also is taken into consideration here. Um, if we go to results, we can play the, the fill, which shows us how the, the molds get filled. 
Now if we want it to, to look a little better, we can right click fill time here and choose properties. And then in animation, we can choose 99 in number of frames and choose apply. Then we can run it again, it runs a little more smooth. get a weld line here where the molten plastics melts together. Also some weld lines here and here. If we don't want our analysis to show our feeding system, we can go to view and under object visibility we can Dechuse gates and run a system. So now we only look at the part. Now let's have a look at time to reach ejection temperature. So right click here and choose show. Go to results and let's play it. So now we see how it's how the, the part is, is getting solid. We see here our gate is frozen and we still have some molded areas here and here. Uh, this means that our packing will not come in here. Now for looking at sink marks, I recommend using this volumetric shrinkage at ejection, uh, which is shown by default when you also choose uh, a pack simulation. So let's have a look at this one. We see we have our bigger shrinkage right next to these ribs and in here and right next to these ribs also. So this tells us that we will might have some, some sink marks here. There actually is, is a possibility to simulate sink marks, but I recommend using this uh, for showing where you can expect your sink marks to occur. Now looking at the warpage indicator, let's choose show here. And here we can choose the best fit constraint and in our nominal max deflection, let's choose 0.5. This shows us that we don't have any deflections bigger than half a millimeter. So let's decrease it a little to, let's say 0.2 millimeters and click apply. That also looks good. Let's choose 0.1. So now we get some red areas, which means that the red areas, they are bigger than a deflection of 0.1. So, and we can look in our summary to see that our filling can easily be done, but Hot quality might be unacceptable. We can tweak our gate size CG to comprehend for, for that. We also get to know what our shot volume is and uh, the, the total pot weight. And we can see that our pressure starts at, our packing profile starts at 99.71% of the filling. So this was all and I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Thank you for watching. Bye.